is the uh, university librarian and associate provost for university libraries at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Welcome, Sarah. Thanks. Well, um, let's start by uh, telling us a little bit about the many roles that you have here at uh, uh, the University of North Carolina. Um, the favorite part of my title is university librarian, mm -hmm. and in in that role, I'm responsible for overseeing the um, the main library, undergraduate library, um, ten branch libraries um, of, of the UNC library system. As associate provost for university libraries, I have um, general uh, planning budget and budget responsibilities for the law library and the health sciences library. Um, and s even though they don't report to me directly mm -hmm. on, in my title as university librarian. Mm -hmm. So that must uh, keep you pretty busy, and I, I know you're involved in a, a number of professional organizations uh, yes. uh, as well. Yes. Uh, you've taken many leadership positions. Um, what's what's the, the favorite part of your job uh, at this point, uh, say this summer at least? <laughs> right. Well, I, I definitely think that um, working, with, with, working with the library people, mm -hmm. with the library staff to um, to create momentum towards pro programs and projects in the library, to um, lead with a, a philosophy of always trying to do better for our users than, than we're currently doing, but at the same time to celebrating um, great accomplishments. So that, that library leadership role um, is, is really one of the favorite things that, that mm -hmm. I do. And, um, Library librarians and library staff members, wherever they work, are are wonderful people and exciting to work with. Mm -hmm. I also really love um, the responsibility of working with faculty members and um, and students, and of course at UNC Chapel Hill and faculty. So it's always very stimulating. Um, work with faculty members to make sure that the library is really serving their needs. One of the things that uh, many people are wondering about and certainly uh, um, our students uh, uh, wonder about and talk about is what's the role of, of libraries for the future? I mean we have uh, the, the various search engines out there, the web, um, the, some people say well gee why do we, why do we need uh, libraries? Uh, I'm sure you have uh, uh, thought about this and um, um, well I think um, as I library staff here, um, we have developed a vision about where we're trying to take the UNC Chapel Hill Library for the There are going to be um, multiple responsibilities that as, as the world migrates more and more from print and paper-based information to electronic information and digital information, um, we we are going to have a major transitional role mm -hmm. um, and in helping our user communities um, move among those formats um, to fulfill their information needs. I think that the future of research libraries is 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 very bright. For one thing, each major research library in North America, and we sort of always place ourselves in the context of the um, of the major research libraries in North America, um, each one of us has accepted the responsibility to collect the information regarding their particular place mm -hmm. in, in our national heritage and um, so in our history and in, in our national geography and so on. And, and uh, collecting that that relates to each library's place becomes a, a very, very important for the future. We have to continue doing that. In the case of UNC Chapel Hill, um, we have magnificent collections reflecting the history of the American South in all the formats, uh, specifically a large manuscript collection about um, the, named the Southern Historical Collection. So. We will continue to have a primary role in collecting the primary and secondary information about, about our area and about our region. We have one of the largest collections anywhere about a single state in our North Carolina collection. Again, 
far into the future, it will be our responsibility to collect information mm -hmm. about um, about North Carolina, right. no matter what the format. Um, the other piece that I'm seeing evolving um, really strongly, and I think that will be an important part of the research library's future, has to do with academic and information technology. I believe that 10 years from now, one of the busiest centers in the library will be the, the academic technology center where librarians and application programmers are teaming together to help faculty members and others um, incorporate technology in innovative, um, uh, in innovative ways that um, form a, that 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 catalyze the faculty members' uh, work in the classroom, that could become central to a faculty member's research, and so on. And it's certainly, we will be providers of of technology assistance for students, but. I think that in the research library of the future, faculty members will in more and more naturally think, okay, I have this certain technology need and I want something special to accomplish this, some new piece of software, a new search engine, whatever it might be, the library is the place I will, I will go to, um, to, to fulfill that. So we, we're going to have those, those two unique roles, and there's a crossover too because um, one of the things that we will want to do is more and more digitize the unique material that we hold uh, reflecting our region mm -hmm. and um, make sure that that's available so that that technology relationship is going to be really important. But I do believe that we will continue to be stewards of our great uh, legacy book collections, mm -hmm. book and journal collections. Um, it is clear that we will be collecting books, um, if not if not journals. Journals are becoming more and more a part of the electronic library collections that we provide, but we'll be providing print and paper-based mm -hmm. material for a very, very long time. Right. And even if we stop tomorrow, the magnificent six million volume collection of UNC Chapel Hill will need to be cared for, to be brought along uh, th through, through history and all of the additional benchmarks and milestones mm -hmm. that, that we think of and will have to be cared for. I think that there's a great future for us to merge these technology, primary resource collecting, and care and stewardship for the collections. I would hate to see that the collection stewardship would peel off in any way. Um, but when people ask us what will be the need for the library, this, this steward of the collections mm -hmm. through our history is going to be a very important one. Somebody has to take care of it, right? Sure. And there's, it's a, going to be a very, very long time before no book is ever needed. Books will mm -hmm. continue to be needed and to be an important record of our heritage. So that's that's my vision for the future and where where I think our research libraries are going. That's really fascinating. Uh, I mean, it's, it seems clear that that the this sort of more traditional role of of, be, of stewardship for the extant collection is mm -hmm. extremely important. Is not going to go away, especially for the major research libraries. Mm -hmm. But this other kind of role of, of actually taking the lead for uh, being collaborators in instruction and research and providing the the technical and digital support is is really quite fascinating. Uh, I. I can you tell, a little, tell us a little bit more about um, you know, how that will play out? I mean, will you be hiring um, more technical services people, or is it more people with instructional backgrounds or combinations? Uh, it, yeah, well, first of all, I, I think it will be important for us to um, develop very versatile departments of applications programmers. And ultimately, as, as your own um, role in you know, library and information graduate programs evolves, it may be that you will move into a, a role of educating applications programmers mm -hmm. for academic te technology uh, needs. And then of course those programmers have to be um, led and um, partnered with by librarians. 
I already see that that Sills is beginning to produce a new breed of librarians. Mm -hmm. People who are very, very comfortable in technology work. Possibly, I think you're going to increasingly be hiring or accepting into your mm -hmm. programs um, people with computer sciences backgrounds who want right. to take that into, um, into the library world and also, a new curriculum is being started at SILS having to do with digital curation. Mm -hmm. Those digital curators will become right. such an important part of, um, of the academic technology offerings that the library provides. Right. I, the, the information technology departments in research uh, universities, the big central IT departments, um, sometimes talk about this academic um, technology role for for in assisting faculty as part of the the central ITS program and certainly there's a lot of work to be done and plenty mm -hmm. to go around I think that's that's great but I think that libraries and library people are an even better position to help faculty with with applying um, innovative technologies to the needs of research and, and teaching because we have a sense of how information works in a research project. We have a sense of the wealth of resources that have to be woven together or put into a, a, a stream that, um, that can really, um, in, that, that, that has to be at the very core of what great faculty members do in teaching and research. Um, the information technology, the role of information technology staff um, versus the role of library and academic technology staff is, is a really interesting mm -hmm. um, overlap. And Gary, you and I served on a committee that had mm -hmm. to do with, with the future strategies for development right. of the campus information technology services. Um, to me, one of their most important roles, not their only role, but their most important role is to care for and keep robust the, the, the way that um, the, 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 the complicated and powerful networks mm -hmm. that are the vessels for academic information and technology, um, the, the physical management and um, in a sense, the physical manifestations of the information that that we collect and generate, both in the in in the academic mission of the university mm -hmm. and in the library's mission. Um, but when it comes to bringing that content alive in support of the mission of the university, I think that the libraries and librarians are very, very well placed for now and the future to, to partner with IT people uh, to, to um, as I said, really bring that information alive. That's a great phrase. I, I like that. Uh, the, the, the role of the librarian uh, is, to, is to help bring the information alive uh, in conjunction with the, the faculty, the students, uh, and, and that, that's, a, that's sort of a, a nice extension of the traditional intermediary kind of role. Right. And, and uh, uh, it's, a, it's a great phrase. I like that. I, I might steal it. Okay. <laughs> it's all yours. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing content alive. That's nice. Um, You've been um, um, the the leader on campus uh, uh, in in thinking through the tough issues of institutional repositories, and this must fit in with this kind of a vision because right. you know you sort of have the the almost the the best of all those worlds. Right. Uh, you have to deal with the infrastructure, but then you also have to deal right. with this bringing stuff alive and maintaining it uh, alive for for the future. Um, what are your thoughts on on our progress there. Well, our, uh, we're, we're making progress. We, we had an opportunity to do some, we had a fantastic information uh, uh, institutional repository mm -hmm. committee, mm -hmm. as, as you know, um, that, we, that is very, very dynamic and made so much progress um, in, in determining and shaping the institutional repository that we build. We had a choice in the middle of that committee's deliberations to either go for some temporary resources and um, do some quick programming to quickly get a repository 
um, off the ground and um, start ingesting content. Um, I chose to go ahead and take the harder route, which is to get ongoing resources that we could use, the staff members that could continue, the applications programmers again, that could continue after we, after our, after we pilot the repository. Um, so obviously that means it's taking a little bit more time to get off the ground, but we have um, the staff who's responsible for the repository, um, the, the, the director of the Carolina Digital mm -hmm. Library and the people who report to him are developing a vision of um, a repository that as we build it today, it will be interoperable, it will be extensible, it will scale vastly up and can grow in modules and pieces as needed over the decades ahead. And there we will be able to uh, uh, deposit faculty members and others in the institution will be able to deposit um, a, a wide variety of information. Um, the, there are several types or categories of information that can end up, and I think will end up, going into Carolina's institutional repository. The first kind is in some ways almost the easiest kind. Um, information that is, has been developed by um, university people, faculty, or whoever that don't fit into the necessary, necessarily fit into the patterns mm -hmm. that, um, that we are accustomed to. It might, they won't necessarily be a printed, published monograph or a journal article or any of the um, academic resources, but um, more more gray literature, for instance, mm -hmm. um, um, inter interdepartmental notes and uh, conversations that faculty members have had that others in the university have had, um, different kinds of information generated as a result of holding a conference, um, think pieces, lab journals. Um, mm -hmm. collections of slides developed for maybe for the classroom, uh, both published and unpublished. Um, I even see us being becoming able to accommodate um, co aggregations of research data that have been generated mm -hmm. either for mm -hmm. subsequent use or research data that would be held um, with privacy keys right. uh, by the repository so that the, the researchers will know that this information is being stewarded and cared for with a purpose over many decades. So this variety of unique material that just doesn't necessarily fit into other traditional categories of information. Um, one example that I'm so excited about um, that will be part of the pilot of our institutional repository is that the director of the North Carolina um, Archaeological uh, Collection here, Vince Deponitis, mm -hmm. has managed to digitize all the field notes back to 1930. Wow. And has digitized pictures taken over all those many decades, photographs taken of the material, and also is, um, um, so photographs taken of the, of the archaeological sites, as well as pictures taken of the objects that the collection contains. Um, this in itself is not a book or a journal. Right. It's not published, but it's a kind of information that exists within the university that's very, very valuable. And um, so this will be uh, digital information in the repository that I think that uh, Professor Stepanitis will want to have fully accessible to the world. Mm -hmm. And this gets to another role of the inf institutional repository. UNC Chapel Hill has one of the best academic reputations of any university, especially any public university in, in the country. When people get a look at the um, digital information that uh, the archaeology uh, center has, has developed, I think that it will really add to the luster of the institution. This is just one example of how that, that happens. Then there's a second role for the institutional repository that has been in the conversation in our national, um, our national meetings, both um, for library and information science faculty members and for librarians. And that is the institutional repository playing a strong role in 
um, in the uh, scholarly communications, um, uh, mm -hmm. the scholarly communications picture that we that we see developing, if we can be successful in convincing faculty members to deposit um, their papers, perhaps uh, the final version of a paper right before publication, um, or post publication if it's if it's permissible, and other traditional portions of, of uh, information generated through mm -hmm. research, um, we could end up having a collection, uh, collection in quotation marks, in the institutional repository that really reflects the, the freshest ideas plus the, tra the, the, the building of ideas over, over time in a mm -hmm. published body of works. That can be reflected in the repository. and. Can reduce the, the uh, can possibly it's not completely known yet but could possibly reduce our reliability. I, I mean I'm sorry our our academia's reliance on published mm -hmm. journals and and books, right. but most especially published journals that fit into the subscription pattern mm -hmm. pattern of of paying and acquiring. Some very very hopeful people have thought that. Um, a, a dense network of institutional repositories among all of the academic institutions in the country, if that ever could happen, mm -hmm. would end up uh, supplanting the role of the traditional publishers of scholarly journals and would uh, provide enough competition to break the spiraling price increases. T to me, I don't, I'm not sure that institutional repositories can can break into the scholarly communications uh, mode in in exactly that way to supplant this other these other methodologies. I do think um, that institutional repository content can be um, subjected to peer review and can mm -hmm. be authoritative and scholarly if we if the professors if you all figure out the apparatus for doing that, but. Um, the scholarly communications roles and the the uh, rare and unique information that is being generated, um, non-published information that's being generated at the university. These are two major mm -hmm. roles that will will be um, very very important contributors overall to the quality of content at UNC Chapel Hill. I think that. Um, Additional additional uses for the institutional repository will develop if we are successful in building the kind of scalable, interoperable repository that that I'm I'm hoping um, we will develop. Faculty members will think about new uses um, if. If they understand that the repository is something that they need, is a reliable, it can be a reliable partner exactly. in right. in the research um, in their research, then things that we're not even thinking of now will come, will arise out of that. Um, I, I do want to mention one thing that I, I slightly referred to, and that is the role of the depository in in holding and curating large bodies of research data. Right. Um, this is a, a new idea that um, people are talking about these days, although as much as 10 years ago, uh, faculty were approaching me and asking if there was any possibility that we could store all of the detailed data that they had mm -hmm. generated that is not necessarily used but should not be discarded. Right. And we know that there are faculty members and others who are storing their work in, 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 on stacks of CDs right. um, where the repository can really um, make a permanent archive for those things mm -hmm. and uh, deal with all kinds of changing circumstances. If you, if you put it into the repository just as you're finishing your research, you might say, I don't want anyone else to have access to this. Ten years later, you might change your mind right. and say, "This this could be interesting if more people had access." I'll I'll signal to the repository mm -hmm. that that access protocol be changed. Um, of of uh, so I, I want us to really consider that the role of a data steward for the institution can can be a significant part of the of the institutional repository. 
um, it's up to us to recruit co faculty content, and that will be the key. Boy, I wish I had um, uh, this uh, with some 20-year-old data that pr it's probably sitting on, uh, well, I know it's sitting on five and a quarter inch floppy disks that are no longer readable and is probably just lost uh, from 20 years ago that would be interesting to look at oh, in today's right, environment. Right. Uh, so this is a grand vision. Uh, and uh, I heard an anecdote at a conference last week um, about a faculty member whose method of backing up and storing, curating his data is to save them on CDs and mail them to his mother, oh. um, who is hanging on to the CDs for dear life, one presumes. <laughs> hmm. My mother threw all my baseball cards away. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well. yeah, that's... That's really interesting how, how people um, sort of begin to realize they have to cope with these problems right. and once we have digital information that uh, is you know, very, very uh, susceptible to um, um, erasure, loss uh, uh, over time. Um, and, and so this, this notion of data stewardship as part of the institutional repository is, is really fascinating. Um, it, one of the challenges I, I guess I faced as I've talked to um, people about this is I'd be perfectly happy to sort of hand over all my stuff. I just don't want to have to add all the metadata and and mm -hmm. and do the documentation. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you're absolutely right that it, it it it's going to take um, faculty thinking in a little bit different uh, way about when they create things mm -hmm. at the time of creation and mm -hmm. distribution that they can perhaps pass this off and right. then you don't have this oh my gosh I've got to you know try, try to go back through 30 years of of, mm -hmm. of publications and, and research and try to add it uh, I mean none of us are are, are really going to have that time so it's it's a nice uh, it's a nice collaboration that I right. think uh, you're setting up with um, faculty and the library I'm I, I think it'll really work and be um, be a, a good uh, asset for the university I would like to, it, it seems to me, I could be wrong, I haven't done a literature search lately, but it seems to me that there is a strong parallel with university archives and mm -hmm. with university records management. And archives, of course, are paper-based by and large, but, they, but university archives do contain all kinds of, of media that um, faculty members and others have deposited with their, with their mm -hmm. collections. So I do think that the same kind of service-oriented, receptive, and open attitude that you find in university archives, and serious uh, dedication to preserving the intellectual assets of the institution can be applied mm -hmm. um, in the institutional repository realm and um, w with great success. And records management um, methodologies and principles and guidelines can also apply very well, and I'm hoping and predicting that our institutional repositories will successfully step into the records management world. We're not even close to that yet, but um, but the, the the potential is definitely there. Well, this has uh, been uh, enlightening and um, uh, very helpful, and um, the university is uh, fortunate to have um, um, you with your uh, a, 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 really a, a grand vision. And I think the decision to actually take the long and more difficult uh, route vis-a-vis -vis the institutional repository uh, support is is a uh, is a good one for us. And uh, look forward to seeing this play out in the years ahead. Good. I I predict we'll get there. Thank you very much. <laughs>